the Wisconsin Democratic Party will pick a new state chairman at its annual state convention June 5 and 6 in Milwaukee. So Wisconsin I has been going around to 15 Democratic legislators asking them if they've endorsed any one of the five candidates. When I asked State Senator Kathleen Weinhout, Democrat uh, from Alma, 31st Senate District, she said, check with me next week. When I checked with her this week, she said, let's do an interview on this subject. So Kathleen, thank you. Welcome to Wisconsin I. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, let's talk about recent history in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. um, when I talked to Senator Erp, uh, Erpenbach, he said, look, we've had victories. We've elected Tammy Baldwin, and President Obama carried the state mm -hmm. in 2012. But those were the only two victories, and you just won, what, your third term? I did. You did. Okay, so you've got some history in this, too. And as you look back over elections since 2010, has your Democratic Party not fared too well, Senator? Uh, our Democratic Party has fared miserably, absolutely. And we have failed to engage the people we need to engage, our base. And we can see that in the difference of... Democrat potential Democratic turnout in off years. I did just a little bit of math before coming over here, and when I look at potential Democratic turnout in 2014, mm -hmm. we had about 65 percent of potential Democrats turnout, and we had about 86 percent of potential Republicans turnout. The Republicans have been outperforming the Democrats in getting their base to the polls in an off year, and we've been losing seats because of it. When I talked to, again, something else Senator Erfenbach said that I want to ask you about, when I said, um, why is it 63 Republicans and 36 Democrats in the Assembly and mm -hmm. 18 Republicans and 14 Democrats in the Assembly with one seat to be filled April 7th, he said, it's a matter of redistricting. We've been gerrymandered. Is it that simple, Senator? No, no, it's not that simple. Absolutely, he's right. And we have to win in Republican districts if we're ever going to take back the majority. But frankly, there are a lot of Democrats that stay home on an off year. They're just simply not engaged by the candidates. And we need a different ground game in especially swing districts or marginal Republican districts. Well, oh, let's talk about, so you're talking about the fact that Scott Walker has won three elections mm -hmm. since 2010. Mm -hmm. You're talking about your party losing seats in both the Assembly and the Senate. You're, you're talking about your party losing Dave Obie's congressional seat yes. in the 7th District. Absolutely. Those, these are the losses that have grieved you as a, as a Democrat. Absolutely. I started in 2010, and, and if I look back on what happened, the Democrats were totally blindsided. They did not expect as many Democrats to stay home. And frankly, in many ways, 2014 was worse. When I look at the student wards around the University of Eau Claire, mm -hmm. University of Wisconsin Eau Claire, mm -hmm. I represent that area and I look at the turnout, it was worse in 2014 than 2010. 2010 was a banner year for the GOP. We haven't solved the problem. If we're ever going to win elections, we need a completely different plan in the Democratic Party. Is this an issue of messaging, Senator, or is it the ground game that you talked about it's earlier? Not, it's not as simple as just one criteria or one new plan that has to be followed. So, yes, there's a problem with message. Um, I think there's a problem with policy, and I think there's a problem with, the, with what's happening in the communities. And I, I can see a path to solving these problems. I don't think there's any Democrat in Wisconsin that doesn't agree that things are not working and we need to try something new. Now we're having a grand debate about what that something new is. And that's the reason you're so interested in the issue that thank you for coming in to talk about the choice that Democrats are going to make at their June 5, June 6 convention in Milwaukee, the next state chairman. But let me ask to set up that question, what is, uh, let's go back to it. What is the state of the Wisconsin Democratic Party today? In transition. Transition. Yes. And, and I want to be a person who helps lead that transition. I think this may be the first and the only time in a generation where we can truly turn the party upside down. Well, um, then, 
talk about what's at stake in the choice the party's going to make in June 5 and 6 for a next chair. You talk about your expectations for that next chair, he or she. Well, the, ne the next chair needs to guide us through this period of transition. And perhaps the most important task of the next chair is to facilitate a statewide democratic discussion on where we, what, what's working, what's not working, and where we need to go next. And I worked with some of my friends in western Wisconsin and in central Wisconsin to help begin this discussion. And when I saw you in the elevator and we talked, chatted a bit about this show, I said, wait till after the 28th of February. On the 28th of February, we're having a gathering over in Stevens Point. All of the county chairs and all of the CD chairs have been invited. Representatives from all of the CD except for I believe the first came to that gathering we had about 60 people we had a very frank discussion about what was happening we followed just a basic business a strategic planning process where we talked about our strengths weaknesses threats and opportunities and I was amazed at how much consistency there was in that discussion and my friend the third CD chairman a chairwoman Lisa Herman and um, Martha Lanning facilitated that discussion both upon my request and encouragement I wanted to stand back and, and let that happen I was thrilled at what happened because there was very much a, a unified um, there was clarity to our problems and there was a unified agreement on what to do to go forward okay not necessarily who but what and uh, before, understand. before we talk about who I think we should talk about what needs to be done well, go ahead well, first of all, we need to listen to the people that are working in the areas that need help. So these are our swing districts, our marginal Republican districts, the districts we need to win in the new map. And frankly, we got to live with the new map and stop complaining about it and figure out how to win. And what, what we saw were two of the things we mentioned right at the top of this hour. We need a different message and we need a different ground game. But more important, we talked about the changes in the structure and the governance of the party. Without real power, without the ability to make decisions, without the ability to push back on the decisions that are made by the state party and by the state party chairperson, we will continue to fail. There must be clearly an administrative committee representing all interests in the state where they have the power to say, I'm sorry, this plan is not working, and we need you, Mr. Chair, to do something different. We have seen a consolidation of power in the state party that reminds me of what the governor has done in the Department of Administration. We have seen appointments made so that that administrative committee has basically been neutered. It doesn't have the financial information. It doesn't have the um, human resource information. It doesn't have the management information to be able to make the decisions. And it doesn't have the decision-making power. So if we need to change the Constitution, if we need to change the bylaws, I believe that's the first work of the new chair, to figure out what we need to do to win and how to create the governance and the structure to make that happen. Okay, I, I want to say two things. Number one, um, the outgoing chairman, Mike Tate, uh, I have personally invited Mike Tate to come and discuss some of these issues because he's served a long time. He's mm -hmm. survived many bruising battles. <laughs> but I think you have just said, so the invitation is still out there. Mike, if you're watching, please come in and we'll do an interview. I think you just said he's not been an effective chairman for at least your D Democrats you represent in Western Wisconsin? I think it's very clear we need to do something different. What we're doing is not working, and frankly, we cannot win statewide if we think that the only way we're going to win is to turn out Madison and Milwaukee. If you've done that, you have not done your homework. The numbers are not there, and anybody that studied Wisconsin should know that. To get ready for this show, I looked it up. The last time a Democratic chair didn't come from Milwaukee or Dane counties is uh, at least 18 years ago. Mm. Uh, bad thing, Senator? <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Okay. And what, where were we 18 years ago? Uh, that the, would have been 1997. But think about what happened in 1992 and 1994. Right. What, when, when Republicans the won the House, uh, the Assembly in 1994. Go ahead. And, and we had a solid majority going into that decade of the 1990s. And something really bad happened over time. We lost, we lost, we lost, we lost. Okay. And because of it, 
our schools are struggling. Because of it, the UW is being decimated. Because of it, we have, we're, we're putting more debt into transportation and, and not figuring out how to solve the problems. And I could go on and on. Okay. Well, now let's go forward. As a result of the meeting of county chairs in Stephen po uh, Stevens Point that you attended, we now have five candidates. So we're going to show a graphic, and it's in front of you, Senator. And what strikes me is um, this is a regional debate. Yeah. Um, uh, Jason Ray, who has been a tireless worker for the party, a young man, he's only 28 years old. He joined the Democratic National Committee at age 17. He's a candidate from Milwaukee. Uh, Martha Lanning ran for the state Senate. Uh, good friend of yours, and mm -hmm. you're probably going to tell me you th think she's the best candidate, but let's get to that later. Uh, she's from the town of Sheboygan. Former uh, state chairman Joe Winicky is from Verona. That's from Dane County. Former state representative Jeff Smith of Eau Claire, who you used to work with. He, mm -hmm. was, he was one of your assembly members mm -hmm. for your 21st district. And uh, uh, former state representative Stephen Smith of um, Shell Lake, I think. Mm -hmm. So those are the five candidates. Do you want to, um, first of all, do you endorse Martha Lanning? Absolutely, yes. Well, let's start with her. Why? Martha is a fresh face to the party. She brings um, the perspective of a grown-up. And frankly, one of the problems we have is that there's too much juvenile name-calling, especially in the press. And that's hurting our possibilities outside of Madison and Milwaukee. Is it playing to the base? Of course. But frankly, we've got the vote of the base. As long as we continue to listen to the base and re represent the base, we will have their vote. The problem is that we must convince people who are either not engaged and are Democrats or who are independents. And the strategy must involve both. Martha brings a fresh attitude. She comes to the party with a strong background in leadership and management. She most recently worked on the development of a community center, a multi-generational community center 4 in Sheboygan. Million dollar she center. raised $4.6 million to help that. She um, went to work to run as a senator from the 9th. She lost the election, but she learned a great deal about the inside of the party, what was wrong with how things were being run, and she has a lot of ideas on what we need to do different. Yes, message is part of it, but frankly, first of all, we must listen to the people in the party across the state to make sure that we gather that wisdom and give them all a seat at the table. It's the only way we're going to win. She believes in empowering those local county chairs and the local members and the local grassroots people. And when I say turn the party upside down, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm talking about saying to the consultants and the people that are making money off this party and get paid whether they win or lose, that you guys got to stand down. And right now, we got to listen to the people who know Wisconsin. Okay, I respect you coming in here, but I'm going to ask you why she's better than the other four candidates. So let's talk about why would Martha be better than Jason Ray, a longtime party activist? Jason Ray works for a company called Nation Consulting. Yes. I know Nation Consulting very well. I opposed them in 2007 and I opposed them in 2009. And frankly, they are what's wrong with the Democratic Party. You may remember. You oppose them on, 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 on well, what issues? Excuse I'll me. I'll tell you. Go ahead. The, the, the quote unquote modernization of first the cable industry and then the telephone industry. What, what happened? is that Jason Ray took a very large contract, and I don't know what it was, create, I mean Jason Ray's company, took a very large co contract and created what I would call an AstroTurf organization. It's, that nation was the executive director of something called TV for Us. There was a great deal of um, shenanigans in terms of misrepresenting the information that he delivered to the legislature, his organization. Each one of the legislators got a huge binder of people that supposedly um, supported this deregulation of the t cable industry. The, you may remember the, the, uh, the change of leadership in the Senate, the Senate majority in 2007 was partly about this bill. The Democrats split, the Republicans supported it. Um, when Senator, um, Senator Robson was holding off AT&T and as soon as Senator Decker took over in a coup right after the budget was passed, it was the first bill he brought to the floor. Okay. I think you just said then, Jay, you think Martha would be better than Jason because do you think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Jason represents the business as usual? Well, the he, he represents the corporatization 
of the Democratic Party. He represents the power of money to control what I believe is the power of the people. The party of the people, the, the little guy, the guy that's not represented. I've heard that AT&T has 17 floors of lawyers in Chicago. When I ask for something simple to allow people to keep their home phone line and not have it disconnected, they told me, AT&T told me, well, you know what? We're going to have to run that little tiny bill by our 17 floors of lawyers. Okay. Something's wrong with this. Let's move on. Why is Martha better than former state chairman Joe Winicky? Is well, I nominated Joe Winicky for his job, I think it was in 2005, as state party chair. I believe that Joe would be true to his promise of bringing in everybody from the state and having that real live grassroots, locally driven, you know, bottom up type of party that I envisioned. It didn't happen. I was disappointed. A lot of people I, that, that I encouraged to vote for Joe were disappointed, and Joe's had his chance in my mind. We need a fresh face. We need somebody with new ideas. When Joe came into the Capitol Press Room here about 10 days ago, uh, we talked about his campaign, and he said, I'm making this pledge. If we don't start winning in 2016, 2018, I will only serve one term. That doesn't impress you? I, th I think that's damning his whole campaign. Okay. Because that's the problem we have right now. Okay. Um, why is Martha better than former state representative uh, Jeff Smith, who used to be part of uh, the 25th, 21st District? I know Jeff very well. Yes. I've worked with him for at least 11 years. I, I have had very detailed conversations about his concerns. I know his skills. I know his weaknesses. And right now, one of his weaknesses is that he is extremely negative. You don't have to go very far on YouTube to find some really awful videos that not only hurt him in the 2014 campaign, they hurt me. And we must be a positive beacon of hope for the disenfranchised, for the poor people, for the people who do not have a voice in Madison. We cannot spend all of our time in juvenile name calling. And I just don't think he's at a point in his life where he's got the skills and the vision to move us forward. And then finally, uh, why would Martha be a better candidate than former state representative Steve Smith? Well, I've also worked with Steve, and I respect him, and he's very hardworking. And I would say about all of these candidates, there is a place for them in the party. I just don't think it's in leadership. Um, are you afraid that coming here and saying these pretty candid things about the other candidates is going to touch off a public debate that some would rather handle not in uh, shows like this, Senator? We need a public debate. I, I don't fear public opinion. We need to have a public debate. We need to talk about all these candidates. We need to mostly talk about what our collective vision is for the Democratic Party. Because frankly, Steve, that's the only way we're going to get through this. You know, maybe we do have a, a, a tendency to have a big public discussion about things. And President Clinton said, you know, Republicans fall in line and Democrats have to fall in love. Well, you know, let's have the dating game. Let's try and decide who it is that we're going to fall in love with. But first of all, let's talk about what it is we need how do we need to change? And then who's the best person to do that? Um, you come from what I'm going to call the mad as hell wing, the progressive <laughs> mad as hell wing of the Democratic Party. Okay, you're outspoken, you're concerned, you're angry, and that is a candid style that you're well aware of your critics. And your critics say, who is Kathleen Vinehout who ran for governor in the 2012 re recall and got only 3% of the votes? Who is she to tell us about the future of the Democratic Party? And I want to give you a chance to respond. I'm winning where we need to win. It's that simple. And we all know what happened in 2012 and 2014. The party hand, the, the tire ups in the party handpicked a candidate who lost. When I look at what's going to happen in 2016 and 2018, I'm pretty sure that most of the Democrats I talk with are saying we need something different. Who would have been a better Democratic, Democratic candidate against Governor Walker in last year, Senator? I would have. You would have. 
Um, how close did you come to running? Um, I was uh, practically in the race if I hadn't hit a wall of snow somewhere between Racine and Kenosha. That was your accident? <laughs> That's right. Did, uh, really? How, how's your health? Are you, are you back 100%? No, but I, and, and frankly, I was considering running for chair. And if Martha hadn't gotten into the race and I hadn't been able to find a candidate that I thought could do this, I would have run for chair, even at the risk of taking my health a couple of steps back. Because right now, it's more important for us to get what's happening in the Democratic Party right than it is for me to run for governor or any other higher office. If we don't get this right, our state is not going to look like what we woke up today and saw. And, and all you got to do is look at the state budget to know that, that this is a very serious time in Wisconsin's history. And um, is this interview the first in you saying you may indeed run for governor? In 2018? I have no idea. And I can tell you that I will not run if there are not major changes in the Democratic Party. Because frankly, we can't win. What we're doing isn't working. Um, let's talk about um, all this discussion occurs in the, in the backdrop of two facts. Um, do you think Hillary Clinton, excuse me, will be the Democratic presidential nominee in 2016? And is that a good thing for your party? Well, the, certainly the conventional wisdom is that she will. And the conventional wisdom is that to run for president, you need a great deal of money. And so people that I support, like Elizabeth Warren, are not considering it because Hillary clearly has the money. How do we change the Democratic Party? I believe we change it from the bottom up. So if we can develop the kind of 365 day a year in the neighborhood organization that engages our base that doesn't go to the polls, I think that begins to show that something different can happen. Right now, there is a struggle for the soul of the Democratic Party. There are some very wealthy donors at the national level that are playing in what the future holds. And they might mouth the platitudes of a truly bottom-up organization, but they have yet not yet been willing to give up con the control. And everybody knows that you don't give up power, you seize it. And the only way for us to move forward is for the grassroots to say, hey, if you're coming in my county, dear statewide candidate, you're going to play by our rules. How many candidates have gone out there and said, how do you win in Sheboygan County? I want to win, and I want to do what it takes. And you guys know Sheboygan County or Buffalo County more than anybody else. Do you think the email controversy involving Hillary Clinton is one more example of why she might not be the most effective presidential candidate for your party? Senator? I think the email controversy is overblown. When I talk with people in Buffalo County, they don't really care too much about it. Okay. I think mostly people want somebody who will stabilize the ship of state, who will keep us out of a recession, and frankly, keep us out of a war. The other backdrop issue I want to ask you about, is it a good thing for your party that Russ Feingold is number one coming home and showing all the signs that he's going to challenge Ron Johnson next year? Well, certainly Russ's history is with the people. And to the extent that he can do that, listen to the people, represent the people, he's taken some very tough votes, and I really applaud him for that. I think we can have him help shape the vision of the new Democratic Party. When I, as I said, I talked to 15 Democratic legislators, State Representative Jonathan Brostoff, who's a freshman, who's thoughtful. He's mm -hmm. not endorsed anybody, but he says, I want a chairman who's going to think long term. And we have got, this is him speaking, we have got to have at least one house when the next redistricting lines are drawn after the 2020 census. Um, is that a huge priority with you as you seek this, th these changes, Senator? Oh, absolutely. It's, 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 more, it's done 101. <laughs> we, we must. There's no way we can continue to be in the, in the minority and create the kind of state that I believe the majority of the people want. There must be some way to at least um, shame the Republicans into voting for a non, uh, nonpartisan redistricting plan or send that redistricting plan, if it is incredibly gerrymandered like it is now, to court. Mm -hmm. And there's a great deal of history in Wisconsin that that has happened in the past. Why can't your party beat Scott Walker? Why has he won three elections in four years? Because he wins in my neighborhood. It's that simple. Your neighbors? My neighbors. Buffalo County voted for Scott Walker. And the issues are the number one, two, three issues that you talk to your neighbors and... Well, it's interesting. Rural schools, 
health care and agriculture and I would say the environment. We, what we have is a disconnect between the will of the people and their voting patterns. We can see that in all the referenda that passed around the state. People want us to take the Medicaid money. They want us to cover the poor. They certainly want us to help the frail elderly and the disabled, like Scott Walker is not in the, what's he's privatizing family care and, and doing away with the IRIS program. But what I, he does, people want their rural schools. We can see it in, in referenda after referenda that has been passed. So how is it that we change this? I believe the Democrats have an obligation to reach out to the people that need information to square their opinions with how they're voting. I cannot fault the people in Buffalo County for voting against what they feel are their own values and what they care about if they don't have the information. And I hear so many people from Madison and Milwaukee say, oh my gosh, those people just don't, they don't they, they're, not, they're voting against their own interests. But hey, let's talk about why. You know what? There's a great chasm where all, almost all the information from Madison and Milwaukee falls in, somewhere around Columbia County. In western Wisconsin, cell phones don't work, we don't have broadband, we get Milwaukee television, we get Milwaukee radio, even National Public Radio doesn't reach my farm, Wisconsin, on the Wisconsin side. So how are we supposed to know what's going on if there's no place to find it? How do we know, especially the person who's a single mom, working two jobs, trying to keep things afloat, trying to do the best job, but there's nobody in her neighborhood who's saying, I know you voted for Scott Walker, and he's just not going to help that school in Alma. I need you to come to the polls and vote for the referendum to keep Alma open, and then the school, and then I need you to learn more about what's happening in rural schools and vote for the next governor who's a Democrat who I am convinced is going to help our schools stay open. Okay, the takeaway here is you're supporting Ma Martha Lanning. She's not from the Milwaukee Madison uh, power axis and she will um, be the uh, candidate of fundamental change that you think is needed. And she's got the skills to lead. What if she's not chosen? What are you going to do then? Well, I'm going to work with whoever is chosen to try and make the vision that I articulated today, that I have spoken with so many Democrats around the state that they share, that we clearly saw come consistently out of the meeting of the 28th and Stevens Point, that was what led Martha to make the decision to run. Clearly, people have some clarity to what it is that needs to happen. Those people... All of us need to say, hey, Mr., and I probably will be Mr. Chairman, we need you to listen to us and to take our advice and to make this plan real in every neighborhood all across the state. And you're not afraid of this debate over who the, who's the next party chair becoming public and uh, anybody who say this level of public debate, because the Wisconsin is going to invite some of these candidates if they want to come or their supporters to make the same to cover the same issues that you just did you're not afraid this is going to weaken and fracture the democratic party frankly i say to you thank you steve thank you very much for giving me the opportunity we need to have this debate it's very important for the future of the state that we choose who our next leader is very carefully democratic senator kathleen feinhaupt 31st district from alma thank you so much for coming in my pleasure appreciate it thank you